All right, welcome back to Power Simulator. It's been a little while, uh, but they now have a new DLC for Alice's Adventures, based on Alice in Wonderland. Five new maps restored to Frabjous glory. Fantastic. Alice's Adventures. Let's get started. I wonder how they introduced this one. <laughs> Entrance hall down the rabbit hole. Aha, the fix it with the portable spittle gun, and not a moment too soon. Hurry, hurry, an awful child, of that there can be no doubt, has besieged us. Not only did she eat and drink that which wasn't hers, but she then cried herself a river which to make her escape. She has besmirched both the reputation of wonderful children the world over, and the walls of our once great hall. I'm already far too late to explain it much more, but we would be very much appreciate you getting to it. The sooner you can be done, the sooner we can all forget it ever happened in the first place. Excellent. We get the pro. As I would really hope. <laughs> Continue. Funk. Funky. Okay, well, I guess we start from the beginning. It is a very good place to start. Now, what's the what's the controls again? Let's see, a great hall, but I hope we can trust you to behave more reasonably than that child Alice. Ah, uh, Alice. Alice. Who the F is Alice? A more awkward creature you couldn't hope to find without adding whiskers, sharp claws, and calling it a... Yes? Now, am I supposed to... No, I can't even see it. Am I supposed to get up on this somewhere? Nope, apparently not, and I don't even have a stepladder. Okay, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do for the top of the doorway. Hopefully it's not that dirty. Let's clean the inside and hope that it dings, shall we? Entrance frame. Oh, we do have a stepladder. It's hiding inside. Cheeky. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's move that off the floor. Let's, uh, give ourselves some light. Let there be light. I always prefer to just move in aim mode. It has been a very long time since I have seen anything Alice in Wonderland related, and I have never read the books. I probably would have enjoyed them when I was a lot younger. I still might. I know I have seen the animated film and the more recent ones with Johnny Depp were good oh, maybe the stepladder was placed just so in order to clean the top of this more easily <laughs> I should probably start with the ceiling and work our way down anyway to be perfectly honest but Get right down here, clean underneath this. Hall nightstand. Ah yes, because nightstand makes sense. <laughs> You're mad as a hatter. Can confirm. Do, I do even usually wear a hat, so the shoe doth fit. There we go, nightstand. Uh, how difficult is it going to be to clean the trinket box? Ah, not too bad after all. Right, let's move this now out of the way again. It doesn't want to seem to live everywhere on the floor. That's that's interesting. Thank you for the resub, Tori. I wasn't sure whether or not I'd get anyone coming along. I started a little bit late today, but had family visiting, so let's work our way backwards along the ceiling, shall we? I did really want to get onto this uh, last weekend, but just didn't end up streaming anything really. <laughs> uh, we were busy on the Saturday and then the Sunday we were having a bit of After Effects from a party, so... And not the fun kind. Little ceiling. How long is this thing? I should have done a little walkthrough to actually figure this out. That's quite long, isn't it? It's quite long, and we're gonna have to crouch through here. Ooh, okay, and then, and then all of that. Could do solo without steps and ladders. Yeah, I often do, but at the same time, I, I'm past the point of trying to make 
more of a challenge for myself than it needs to be. Yeah, I'll make a little bit of a parkour, a few jumps. If that doesn't seem to do it, then I'll just grab the stepladder and get a better angle and be done with it. <laughs> I re I've already done the ultimate challenge in this game of doing it with just the basic washer. Anything else from there? Because I will usually try and avoid using any of the extra stuff if I don't have to, simply because it's a pain to go back and get it all the time. But can be worth it. Because you can spend minutes just jumping around trying to find just the right spot, instead of just grabbing the stepladder, <laughs> giving yourself a better angle. Uh, this is quite a large level to start with, that's for sure. But I guess what else are you going to start with? Makes sense. be interesting to see what the rest of the levels even are. Like I was saying, it's been a while since I've watched any of the related media. So I can't even remember everything that there was. I know there was the, like the Queen's Palace, the Queen of Hearts. Something to do with the Cheshire Cat, maybe? Other than that, don't know. We'll find out. At least they break it into several dings in one long ceiling. Yeah, that's a good start. It's kind of six one half the other, really, because at least if it's a very long feature, you get a lot more forgiveness. <laughs> so, actually, I should um, put just a short extension on, just to make it a little bit more powerful. Because it would be more forgiving, so like I wouldn't have to do as much before it does ding. That's usually the saving grace for things that are just big. Okay, trim's done. Get this column done. Try and work our way down methodically. Oh, 20% done already. Do you know what this Alice did? No, no I do not. But I'm sure you're going to tell me. There we go, ding. I'll tell you. I... I thought you might. <laughs> Mr. Mouse. I don't remember the mouse. I remember there was the hair. There was the March hair. First she wafted around saying how ridiculous it was to have a room filled with different sized doors. I mean, it kind of is, to be fair. Did she not realise how ridiculous it is to call something ridiculous before even taking the time to ask someone, is this in fact ridiculous? Yeah, to be fair, good scientific principles always establish your baseline. Before drawing conclusions. And done the first two so far. Ah, oh, it's hot over there, yeah. It's cold, yeah. It was like two degrees outside this morning. Again. Quite crisp. It'll warm up soon enough in the office though. As soon as I shut the door and have the computer on, it should warm up pretty soon. Oh good, I thought it was going to try and make me go even further in on that one. Good. The chair, the comfy chair. No, just a whole armchair, okay. The comfy chair. Good, 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 good. The upside down candelabra. But of course. <laughs> I must have, for any discerning homeowner, the melted door and inverted candelabra. I do remember there was a knick-knack shop, I think it was in Dublin, that had a clock 
that sat on the edge of a shelf. It's for like the edge of bookshelves, so it was like a melting clock over the edge. It's a Dali-esque clock. Really have room for it in my luggage and got no place to put such a thing, but I did appreciate it for what it was. I definitely a fan of the surreal to an extent. The the surrealist masters of old definitely took it too far in terms of like living a surrealist lifestyle. Like, what does that even mean, you idiots? But I do appreciate the fiction. This is Alice in Wonderland or Doctor Seuss. It is Alice in Wonderland, but I feel there's a lot of cross inspiration. Who was Alice in Wonderland? It was Lewis Carroll, wasn't it? Not sure what the contemporaries were. Seuss might have been inspired by Lewis Carroll, perhaps. In terms of timelines, I'm not sure. But all were likely inspired by the likes of Salvador Dali and such. Prince Dali, right here, see. I, mean, I was a big fan of Douglas Adams growing up with Hitchhiker's Guide. I'm sure he enjoyed a bit of surrealism. It's just fun to look at the world in a bit of a wonky way sometimes. I feel it deserves it. I think a lot of the world's ills come from people taking the world far too seriously. The more serious a situation, the healthier it is to inject a little bit of absurdity. Face, there we go, and now the pedestal. I probably have to get in behind. I underneath, there we go, good. Let's just work our way down, down and down the rabbit hole we go. It is interesting, yeah, we're racking up the percentage. It's at 33% already. And we've not been going that long, even though it looks very long. And the room at the end is quite large so I'm a tad confused by that I think their percentage tracker how it determines percentage might be a little bit off it's usually done by area I thought I wonder if it's being done by number of items no because there's a ton of items down in the end room don't know that looks like Zangar Marsh from World of Warcraft Yeah. And the trim is also done. Excellent. This floor is probably going to be a bit annoying. I suspect there'll be little bits that I've left behind as we go. That's alright. We'll try and get pretty good coverage. Sort of thing that normally I would like to follow the beams just for aesthetic sake, but they twist and they turn. <laughs> Think we're better off just doing a steady cadence, just swish back and forth. It's also the sort of thing you should probably clean from the outside, no, from the inside out rather, not the outside in. Otherwise, we're just pushing the dirt all the way deeper into the burrow, but never mind. The dirt can go to Wonderland as well. And column and then we'll be on to the next here and we're already up to 40% for instance could there be a perfectly good reason why this place has so many differently sized doors I don't know is there I doubt it are you honestly going to tell me that there is <laughs> I mean let's not fixate on the door thing you know I feel there's more important more interesting things that you could be talking about Perhaps the animals who use the doors are also of different sizes. Perhaps every Sunday all those animals converge here for tea and conversation. 
You can also all still go through doors of the same size, regardless of being different sizes yourself, but sure. Very particular about their door sizes. How would you expect a walrus to use a door designed for a door mouse? Uh, you can do doors within doors as well. It's a common thing. You'd have like a smaller door within a larger doorway. But if the doors go to different places, then of course. We have doors of different sizes in our house. We have a full length door going between the second bedroom and the bathroom. Where the rules were all mixed up and they were not following the beams is actually following the beams. Yeah. True, true. <laughs> this bit of hallway feels entirely too straight. It is, of course, an optical illusion as well, because it is getting shorter as we get towards the end. I should take the extension off now, actually. I feel optical illusions and perspective tricks and stuff is an underused thing in it, just like entertainments and stuff. Um, am I allowed to put skins on this as well. Yeah, I thought I was wearing one. They must have taken them off. That's weird. Because, yeah, I'm, sh I'm, thinking, I'm sure I usually had something. I can't remember what, which one I was using. Probably the winter one. Oh, maybe I was using a seasonal one and then it disappeared. Maybe it got reset because I was doing one of the other DLCs that had its own skins. Like this the SpongeBob one. It had its own model. Oh, well. We'll use the gold. I like gold. It feels appropriate. Ding, ding, ding. And this trim is not done, apparently. What are we missing on this? This have not quite gone over something quite correctly. There we go. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Did you ever play that game a little to the left? I do not recognise the title, no. It just makes me think of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Just a jump to the left. And then a step to the right. Put your hands on your hips. And pull your knees in tight. Etc, etc. Much better dance than the Macarena. But. See the different size doors I can get behind but this one is melting and that feels like a problem. In fact all of these are melting. So unless the denizens are like slugma coming from a volcano. But it does at least break up the monotony of the hallway. Just have door after door. I did start playing Super Liminal, but on PlayStation, I am not, not on PC. I don't think I have it in Steam, I can't remember. I think it's on Game Pass, but it's also on PS Plus, so I started playing it on there, just as a little time waster. Not generally a fan of doing stuff like that on stream necessarily, though. Do you have a couple of like puzzle style games that I wouldn't mind cracking out? The tricky thing is that doing them on stream or in a video in general, it's like, well, people might not want to watch them for the sake of spoiling the puzzles, but then it's been out for ages, so it doesn't really matter. Sometimes it could just also take a very long time to solve the puzzles, which is embarrassing. Not that I'm too bothered about that. 
and people who like to find patterns, eh? And organising. I have unpacked as well in terms of organising. Though, it seems a little bit too freeform in some respects. Watch Beyond's play it, I think. And it was good, and it seems like it'll be a chill experience to play. But I think it was a... I was feeling it should be a little bit more prescriptive on, on how you place things in some fashion. But instead of just... Well, it on the one hand leaves it all up to you, but on the, on the other hand will tell you that you can't do certain things because things have to be in certain rooms or something. You have to figure it out yourself. Which is fair, but who knows if it's a little bit sort of objective or something. But it's kind of fun, the fact that they like put things that in the wrong box for the different rooms and stuff. It's like, oh, this belongs in the kitchen. But then too much of that means you're then just clicking around way too much. And it just gets a bit of a pain in the ass. It's like, hey, okay, can you let me put all this stuff into a box that belongs in a different room instead of packing down the boxes after clearing them? So then I can just take everything that goes into the other room into the other room instead of having to do it one by one every time. That's a bit of a nitpick though, let's be honest. <laughs> a nitpick for a game I've not even played yet. Impact was cute, wanted to get all the dark stuff. Dark stars? Okay. <laughs> was, was I missing something? Was it, was it eviler than I thought? Yeah, I always like to kind of clear things and get all the bonuses on levels where possible. Sometimes to my detriment. <laughs> Certainly to the detriment of my sanity. Oh, we're at 60% now. Furthermore, Alice proceeded to eat and drink our wares without the least consideration for their purpose. Did she ponder, even for the merest moment, why we might need eat me cakes to make us grow? I mean, was it prescribed by a doctor, and if it lasts longer than four hours, do you have to pull? Or drink me potions to make us shrink? That's the, you know, if it lasts longer than four hours, I guess. This door is not quite done, is it because of this side it is there we go no she not she seems to one look and guzzled the lot that happens i guess pretty much just all framed that'll be on the other side as well all of these will be double sided it's the organized antithesis basically oh Oh, so is it like, do you get stars of when you put things all in the wrong place or something? That's twisted. I hate it. <laughs> I, I would also still try and do it, but I would hate it. <laughs> sort of thing you have to do the first time you play through it if you can. We're talking about that in term, um, at work in terms of uh, RPGs, and if you play like an evil playthrough, like trying to do a Sith playthrough of Knights of the Old Republic back in the day, and how it's really hard because they just make you to be an absolute ass to people, and it's never great. Often it's quite lazy too, it's like, oh, we're just gonna make this the evil option. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's just the most dickish thing, but whatever. It's not intelligent evil, it's not like insidious or anything like that, it's usually just being an ass. Um, but yeah, discussing the fact that if you're going to do something like that, you, you kind of need to do that as your first playthrough, or if there's anything where there's like a bad ending, so then you can go through properly, like do the, the actual canon ending. <laughs> So you don't finish playing the game with a bad taste in your mouth. Have a tiramisu in your fridge that says eat me, but I'm ignoring it. <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna get hungry. 
didn't have anything else to eat. I had a mandarin before I started, that was it. See how long this level takes. I don't want to be on here for too long today. Because I started late, so then I'm just going to go into lunchtime and I'm just going to get hungry and then I'll get hangry and I'll get impatient with the levels and it's, it's a whole thing. So we'll see how we go. But it depends on how big the levels are. So I know with the Spongebob one it felt like they almost felt a little bit too short in some respects. I think I managed to just zip that one out in a single session. I can't remember. Tomb Raider took a couple because of the large house and the gardens and the obstacle course. I think. Maybe I might be misremembering, but... The Warhammer one definitely took quite a long time, especially with the Thunderwalk at the end. We're ripping through this one though, that's for sure. So once you get into this room, yeah, there's a lot going on in here, but it is all fairly condensed. You know, the optical illusion aspect is it's meant to make it look bigger than it is, so... We'll be at 80% before we know it. Don't really like that song. I'm also thinking that I might do more, like, uh, jump cuts, time lapses possibly, but possibly also just the jump cuts. I was, when I was cutting and doing the highlights for the, the basic washer challenge, I was trying to make sure that I preserved all the gameplay, warts and all, because, you know, it's proof that, yeah, I did the whole thing like this. You know, there's no shortcuts or anything. But with something like this, I don't think it matters so, quite so much. You can just fade into the next milestone or something. Or if something interesting comes up. Keeps trying to convince himself to play the evil role in Red Dead 2. Oh, yeah. Even though it's just a game, can't get himself to be brutal in the game, with it, even when they don't feel it. Yeah, but you feel it. It still feels bad. So I, I get that. Whether it's Knights of the Old Republic, or um, Mass Effect, or Amalur, or any game that gives you the option of being mean, I never like to do so. Ding ding ding, ding ding ding, ooh that's a good ding. Oh I do like that one. That's a funky door. I wonder where that leads. See, there we go, the doors within the doors. That's, that's what I was talking about earlier. You don't need lots of doors of different sizes, necessarily. Well, you do, but you don't need them in different doorways. You can just do... That doorway looks like something out of a hat in time, almost. Ding, 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 ding. The worst is when there's different options, and it's not clear which one is bad that's that's the thing i struggle with a little bit in the witcher where it's like is is this a good choice or is this the bad choice and then sometimes you you make a choice and you think this is the good choice right and then the consequences come and you go oh that that was the bad choice oh <laughs> well, that's awkward <laughs> And obviously it adds to a game's replayability to an extent, but all that happens is I just end up safe scumming because I don't really want to play through the whole game again when it's a big game. So I'll just experiment a bit, or I just end up looking up online as, okay, what happens if I do this? And then I'll just do the kind of optimal outcome or the one with the better rewards anyway and sometimes the ones that aren't technically the nicest option do have the best rewards so you know and if you if you're role-playing a bit of a mercenary then that that can matter oh, 
Oh, it's the tea dispenser, that's right. You love to have a tea dispenser like that. Oh, there's the spout. Oh, is there anything else? The handles. Okay, there we go. Good. I think that's everything. Uh, upper paneling, there we go. Good. Uh, are all of these frames and windows done? Oh, I saw something that wasn't. Ah, oh, that's the paneling. Okay. There we go. We've got more purple doors. You wanted doors and doors? Exactly. When something important happens, we all converge here to decide upon a decision. Do you, though? Do you actually decide on anything? for a mouse with a good idea to be heard above a walrus. What's your fixation with walruses, dude? Beatles fan? Not. Maybe maybe not a fan. What if the small animals consumed the eat me cake and the large animals the drink me potion till everyone was the same size? I don't know. That, that honestly sounds like you're just trying to make people be what they're not, man. I'm, yeah. Would you reach a fair decision then? I don't think so. I don't think you would. Because then you'd all be seeing things from the same perspective, yes, but then you'd then be more likely to forget what your perspective was when you were small, and the important things about being small. All the important things about being big, like having to make decisions that relate to people who are larger. You ever think of that, Mr. Mouse? Mrs. Mouse? I can't remember gender non-specific rodent. Hey, with a like, how do you interpret these choices when given you? And it's like, everyone doesn't interpret things the same. That's why people have so many misunderstandings here. That's right. It's more a case of just as I've gotten older and don't have as much time to play games, like I used to really enjoy games that had more freedom of decision making and like Fallout I played, well Fallout 2 I played multiple times over doing different playthroughs, choosing different stats to start with and you, you get as far as a certain point you go yeah this isn't working I'll start again and then try yeah making different decisions like I think one playthrough my brother and I decided you know what we're gonna get to Vault City and we're just going to kill everyone. <laughs> because we can't be bothered, we're just going to do like a, a dumb strength playthrough. We're not going to bother about diplomacy and doing the test and everything to try and get in. And then we found that it like locks you out of a bunch of other stuff. And, like It's fun when you're young and you've got lots of time on your hands. But nowadays I'm much more inclined to play more of a, just a story based game. Like I could do with like a telltale game essentially. <laughs> or games where you, you have choice in how you do things but what happens is not in your control. I'm fine with that. You know the things that don't matter to the storyline you get the illusion of choice or you get choices that aren't pivotal. So you get some agency but the story trucks on regardless. Sometimes that can be irritating if it goes a way that you don't like. But if it's well written enough, then it's a case of, yeah, you are, yes, you're the protagonist. That doesn't mean to say you dictate literally everything that happens. You know, other players are in this game. That's why I really have enjoyed playing the Persona games, because I like that. You know, the story is very railroaded. And you can play very minimally. It still takes a long time, but you can play very minimally. Or you can be very exhaustive about going through and getting all the confidants and things like that. And they help in terms of your combat prowess and stuff like that and their survivability and their abilities. But the actual story itself, you don't have to worry about. That's just going to do its thing until you get to very specific moments where you have to be careful not to make the wrong decision insofar as the storyline. So you have to be paying attention to what's going on. But you're not trying to dictate what's happening. And I don't mind that either. Just depends on the style of game you want to play. Now this ladder is annoying. I'm going to try and put that out of the way. Because it's in the way on the floor. I can't clean around it. 
Let's just stick that there. We've already done up there anyway. Get it out of the way. Hear much more about the story in a game now? Yeah. I mean, I, the gameplay has to be good. Like, I, I have to still want to play through it. I'm very glad that when I did play the Persona games, I started with four golden, and I'm very glad that it was the golden version was ported to PC. If I had played the original on console, I don't think I'd have liked it. Ditto with P3 Portable. That's definitely better than from what I've heard of how the original gameplay was. It was a lot more restrictive. You couldn't dictate commands to your party members so that often just use the wrong things all the time so you know yes you're taking agency away from the other characters in those cases but it makes for a much better gameplay as an experience and that's what really matters <laughs> and same with five like i actually picked up i played through persona 5 royal uh, and enjoyed that and then i did actually pick up the original for like five bucks on sale on PlayStation and started playing through that, just the base game, and it was so obvious so quickly the improvements that have been made. It's like, oh, oh, this is what it was like. Ooh. And there's just so many things that would have made it a miserable experience. Like it was a it was a grind, not from difficulty, but just fighting the game. <laughs> trying to do things that you wanted to. It's interesting how that happens. So it's, it's almost like the first one was just like a beta test. <laughs> so it's a case of if they do a six, I'll be hanging back and waiting until they do whatever ultimate version they decide to add in after the fact. I might also start doing 5 on stream at some point, but then I started doing 4 and then stopped. I started doing 3 reload and then stopped. <laughs> so you know, I'm not very good at sticking with those sorts of games. Largely because there is a lot of just umming and ahhing and backward and forwarding and... Especially if you're playing through it for the first time or doing just like a more natural playthrough of it, then there's a lot of decisions to have to make at various points that, again, they don't definitely impact the story, but they impact your gameplay. <laughs> and that's more important, and that's why it takes so long to make the decisions. But I feel I have a very good understanding of five and how that works so I'd probably be able to rip through that even in a sort of casual-esque style what remains of Edith Finch I've heard of that one hmm. Yeah, emotive-based games I don't think I'd play much on stream either, because... I don't know, I, f I feel I wouldn't do it justice. <laughs> Regardless of whether I'm actually feeling something about a game, I, I don't know, not the best at communicating that. <laughs> I am not a performer. I'd be like just going, oh yeah, yeah mm, oh yeah, that's very, that's very, oh that's tragic, that's very touching. It's kind of not not what people want to see on Twitch. People want to see people react, right? <laughs> you want to see people getting emotional. That's kind of not what my content is about. <laughs> I do like the mushroom terrarium. Having to back into these corners to get the angles looking up is always very awkward. Just crouch down a bit maybe gives us a bit of a better, better angle. I'm not sure. Don't think it helped much. Panel painting. 
What's that meant to be a painting of? It's a little book nook. A reading nook. Clock. Don't mind me. Just going mildly insane playing this game. It's not much more now, it's just the table and chairs and the floor, I think. And the cake box, of course. Why was I imagining the big dining hall? Is that a separate thing? I was thinking of like the Mad Hatter and the banquet table and everything. Is this where she comes first and then goes to that? I can't remember. Excuse me, sir, your table is melting. Yes, what the, oh, the ladder's there. <laughs> I just started climbing the ladder without even realizing. It's like, what, what am I doing? Okay, there we go. I'm free of the ladder. Right, I had it on the back of the chair, that would do it. I do like the teapot table. It's a cool design. It's hard to clean underneath things. I can't, oh no, I'm already prone, yeah, I'm as low as I can go, so, what still needs to be cleaned about this? Oh, we're up the ladder again. Oh, that apparently. Don't know what I was missing, but I got it. Table, floor, table, table, chair, chair, floor. Oh, something showed up. Melting bookshelves. These are not done? As soon as I haven't got a checklist and yet the floor feels like it's the only thing remaining. There we go. Oh, oh something else. Ceiling support. Yes, around this side or something? No. Okay, well, whatever it was, it's done now. <laughs> Still no checklist. Ah, let's just finish the floor and... Oh, it's these rabbit lamps. That's right, I haven't done these properly. Oh, and the exit curtain apparently too. Okay. Still no checklist, alright. Well. Now we definitely will just finish the floor and see what happens. I feel like the mosaic. Go. Okay, what have I missed? Transition strips and trims. Stuff in the hall. Room ceiling arch supports. Two of those. And one of the chairs. Oh. You. Hello. What seems to be the problem? Yeah. Who knows? Uh, where is the, su the supports around the sides, aren't they? Arch support. Ah, yes. Arch support. Okay, ceiling support, ceiling support, arch support, good, alright, that's all of those, now, where's the, something about the hall, oh, the bit right at the start, alright, <laughs> apparently I didn't, oh, it's right along the ground level, there we go, okay, now what else? Entrance frame's done. It was something in the trim. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hall window. There we go, okay. I don't think it was any of the melting doors. Ceiling trim. Or oh, it might have been floor trim. Let's take a look again. Room door doors, okay. <laughs> Oh, the key on the table, of course. Yep. Uh, let's go back to the hall. Hall floor trims, yeah, it was one of the floor trims, okay. To which one? 
They kind of blink. Right at the start again? <laughs> right at the start. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Um, now, stuff in the room. There's the key on the table. There we are. Now we have the thing. Good. The door door. There we go. One of those. Exit door. Apparently this is the exit door. Oh, it'll be an angle from behind the curtain, will it be? Yep, there we go. And then window curtain. Where's the window? Oh. There's a ton left. Ah. Oh, there we go. The helmet. Done. Down the rabbit hole. New job available. Time lapse time. I didn't see the cat. Oh. Disappeared as soon as we entered. Interesting. I see you're done and just in the nick of time. Air Levenses are fast approaching and the walruses are already upon the door. If I don't double it to the Duchess's kitchen, the trifle will be cold and who would want that? Now come, come. The blast and nuisance is struck again and there's already something else for you to do. 